Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo. This week with the, what I consider treacherous Chesapeake Bay behind us, we enter the official start of the Intracoastal Waterway. And it's always an absolute treat. I love going down, I call it Battleship Row. Uh, I don't know what it's officially called, but it's the largest naval base in the world. You can get surprisingly close to a lot of these naval vessels. And I'm not a military person, but I, it's just for, absolutely fantastic to see all of these different um, ships and designs and stuff and then going through downtown Norfolk which is basically a big shipyard is always just amazing you know normally I like to be away from places that are congested and have a lot of traffic but this is the one exception this place is just phenomenal so I guess uh, and I don't know how far we're gonna make it I'm just gonna try and keep this one down to 15 or 18 minutes under 20 for sure so <laughs> let's let's see how far we go alrighty I guess we might as well go ahead and get right into it grab a drink climb aboard and let's get going we ended up staying in Hampton Virginia for four or five days waiting out high winds and cold rainy weather we were anchored right next to the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, and that is a tunnel that goes underneath the James River and connects Hampton to Norfolk. The reason why they decided to build a tunnel there rather than a bridge, bridges are much cheaper than tunnels, but in the case of wartime, if someone were to damage a bridge and it fell into the James River, it could prevent naval vessels from going in and out of uh, Norfolk, which is the largest naval base in the world. So they opted for a bridge tunnel, so if the tunnel got blew up, blued, blowed up, <laughs> whatever it would be, they could still uh, manage to get naval vessels in and out of there. So we did wait to cross the James River until we had decent weather. The James River can get a little bit choppy, um, and then going down the Elizabeth River is pretty exposed too until you get into downtown Norfolk. You can see the big line of warships there on the left hand side and I don't know the names of all the different ships, there are aircraft carriers and other types of vessels, I have no idea what they are. We did get to see one submarine this time when we were in Hampton, last time we saw three submarines coming in from the ocean and this time we saw one departing so that was really neat. And this row of ships goes on for 8 or 10 miles, it's really quite a sight to see and it's amazing how close you can get to them. We did have one pulling out, unfortunately um, it didn't show up on the static uh, camera, but it was pulling out from its um, slip right when we were going by, which is always neat to see these things, the tugs moving them around, it's just absolutely fascinating. But it was a little bit rolly here, I don't want to subject you to too much of this footage, just in case someone gets a little <laughs> queasy. Transitioning into downtown Norfolk, the Elizabeth River narrows significantly and takes a turn to port, which got us out of the wind and waves, which was nice. Downtown Norfolk is very beautiful. It's basically a big shipyard, but the downtown area is wonderful. It lights up beautifully at night. I've got a, a crappy old cell phone picture from a couple of years ago I'll insert here. At night it's just spectacular. And I haven't actually anchored in downtown Norfolk in several years. The anchorages there are very narrow and they're kind of separated between deep shipping channels and then areas where you'll ground. So, you know, you're getting a lot of wake from the traffic and it's just not a very comfortable place to anchor, but it is stunningly beautiful. Norfolk has got to be one of the biggest harbors in the world, I would imagine. I mean, I'm sure there are obviously big ones Los Angeles you know Shanghai I'm sure there are just massive ones all over the world but Norfolk is is huge in its own right I know it is the big the world's largest Navy but there are tons of commercial activities that go through there too most of the cargo in oil tanker terminals are north of um, North downtown Norfolk they're up by all of the military stuff but there are cargo terminals actually south of Norfolk as well I've seen some grain being loaded into big container ships down there and south of Nor downtown Norfolk is where most of the ship construction seems to go on and there are just tons of new ships being built down that way which is really neat to see Somewhere right in this area is the official start of the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway. There's supposed to be a mile marker zero, but I've never seen it, but it's somewhere right in this area. There. 
There are lots of bridges south of downtown Norfolk, and most of them are either always open if they're railroad bridges, those ones always stay open or raised unless there's actually a train going through, or they're elevated highway bridges so you can go under them at any time. There is one bridge that you do have to call and request an opening, that is the Gilmerton Lift Bridge, and they're always um, super nice. They open on demand. There are times when they do have problems with the bridge. When I came through last year in the spring, they were having issues with a lot of, <laughs> a lot of bridges in the area that we had to coordinate around. But uh, the Gilmerton Lift Bridge opens on demand. When I was coming through this time, we had like six boats that got there all right around the same time. So we all made it through no problem and it was great. Going under the final set of high-rise bridges is kind of the end of Norfolk and it spills out into a nice rural area. Here you do have a decision to make. If you continue on to the port side, which is the left, you'll go on to Chesapeake, Virginia. You'll see a catamaran veering off here to the right or the starboard side of the boat and they're actually going down the Dismal Swamp. So there are two different routes through, through the area. One is the Dismal Swamp. I've never gone that way. I would like to one of these days. The other route is go to go through Chesapeake, Virginia or Great Bridge, Virginia, and then you can take the Chesapeake and Albemarle Canal down to Albemarle Sound. And that's where the Dismal Swamp Canal leads to as well. So you get to the same place in the end. But the reason I always go through Great Bridge is there is a free dock there and there's actually a free dock going down the Dismal Swamp route as well. So that's not the factor that limits us. It's our fuel. So. I've only found two places along the entire Intracoastal Waterway that have decent prices for diesel, and that's kind of a big deal to me um, on a tight budget. So most places it's between five and six dollars currently, and some places, it's, some places, sorry, I can't talk. It's even as high as seven dollars, which is outrageous. When you compare it to diesel that you'd get at a gas station, it's actually no different. There's a little bit of dye added to it, but otherwise it's the exact same fuel. And if anything, it should be less because you don't have to pay the road tax on fuel that's used for marine purposes. So it shouldn't be taxed and it should be cheaper than what you get at the gas station, but it's not, they like to gouge you. They've got the market on, cornered on it, they know that. So they try and take you for a ride anytime they can. And I understand marinas, running a marina has got to be a nightmare. They're expensive, the land is expensive, the taxes are expensive, like I get it. Like I get it, you need to make money, I understand. But at the same time, I need to save money. <laughs> so there are two places, one is in Great Bridge, that's the Atlantic Yacht Basin, they've got phenomenal, the absolute rock bottom best price on fuel you'll find anywhere in the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway. This time it was, I believe it was right around $4. It might've been just under. So that's phenomenal. And when I'm buying 90 gallons at a time, you know, that saves me $200 over what I might pay at the marina just, you know, right across the road. So that's a great savings. And then there's also one down in the Waccamaw River. I think it's the Wak Wakawachi marina it's something like that they've also got phenomenally low prices and it just happens that they're perfectly spaced are you okay Wegan? Hanwe squeaking in the background <laughs> i don't know if you can hear her she's been very demanding all morning what's going on weeks <laughs> so and they're spaced perfectly so i can just barely make it from atlantic yacht basin down to the Waccamaw river with my fuel capacity so it works out good and then beyond uh, the Waccamaw River, I can make it almost all the way to Florida, and that's when you have to start sucking it up and just paying higher prices. On the approach into Chesapeake, Virginia is the Great Bridge Lock, and I use Chesapeake and Great Bridge interchangeably. I think the little community around Great Bridge is called Great Bridge, but the larger city is called Chesapeake, but they're kind of the same thing. So right before Great Bridge is the Great Bridge Lock. And the Great Bridge, Bridge Lock, again, I can't talk, coordinates its passages with that of the Great Bridge Bridge. 
So right beyond the lock, about a mile down the waterway, is a bridge. And that bridge is has very heavy traffic on it, and it open only opens once per hour. So the lock times its <laughs> passages with the bridge. So you have to get there at about uh, 25 to 20 minutes before the hour to make that southbound passage because it does take a while to get everyone through the lock and they want to make sure you're through the lock and up to the bridge by the time the bridge opens at the hour. And then you have to wait for, if you miss the lock passage, then you have to wait for the northbound traffic. So the lock, once it opens and lets the southbound people through, it'll take anyone that came through the Great Bridge Bridge back and it'll pass them back to the north before the southbound traffic can go into the lock again. So if you miss the lock passage, which we just barely missed it, all of us that were steaming up there, you saw a bunch of boats pass me, we all missed it. <laughs> so we ended up having to wait 40 minutes and thankfully in this area, the currents are not very strong and that's because of the lock. So we just kind of hung out and bobbed around for 40 minutes and then we got into the Great Bridge lock and we were able to pass through it and make it onto Great Bridge. Great Bridge, Virginia, or Chesapeake, Virginia, there it's a great town. Uh, there are two free docks once you get through the Great Bridge Lock. There's one north of the Great Bridge Bridge, and there's one south of the Great Bridge Bridge. And at each free dock, you can fit about six boats of my size. And you can stay for up to 24 hours. So basically, you know, you get there one day, you spend the night, and then, you know, you ship on out the next morning. And this time of year, I was a little bit nervous coming in there were a lot of boats in front of me and it was getting, it's a, it's a very short trip from Hampton down to Great Bridge. It's only like 25 miles. So I left super early because I wanted to make sure there was a spot at a free dock when I got there. If you can't grab a free dock, it's quite a ways to get to somewhere where you can actually anchor. Um, it's probably another 15 miles down the road. And at this point, a, at this time of day, it would be hard for a boat that is as slow as mine to make it to another anchorage. So it's a little nervous going through the lock. And there were a lot of boats in front of me in the lock. And thankfully, there was enough space. All of the boats in front of me, all of the sailboats, they did grab a free dock. They went to the south side of the Great Bridge Bridge, and that dock was completely empty so they took all those spaces and there was enough room on the north side dock for me to sneak in so that was great and great bridge is awesome not only do they have the free docks within walking distance there is i uh oh my you okay weegs oh okay hi maintenance weegs what do you need do you need to go outside do you want to come up here come on Weegs. What? Okay, okay, let's get you outside. Come on. All right, come on. Oh, do you want to come up here? Okay. All right, scoot over. Oh, you, you oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, she is very high maintenance. Okay. Anyway, so there is a, a couple of uh, restaurants, actually quite a few of them that are right within walking distance of the free docks. You guys, come on. I'm trying to get something done here. You guys are making this really hard, Wigan. Yes, you are. You are, Wigan. I'm going to have to start this over. I'm going to have to start this all over because of you. Yes, I'm going to have to start this all over. I'm going to have to start this all over. Okay, okay. Yes, you want to go outside and play with your brother. You want to go outside and play with your brother? Okay, okay. Let's get you outside. You go see Tuna. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You go play with the fish. You might Anyway... <laughs> the uh, there are a bunch of restaurants. There's a grocery, a great grocery store within you know a mile. There's fast food. There's everything that you need there. So Great Bridge is a really nice day, and I did do a really decent, or I think a decent video on Great Bridge in the past. I'll leave that down below. Also with Norfolk, I did a lot more in depth um, video passing through Norfolk where you get to see a lot more stuff, and I'll put a link to that right down below. So check those out if you're interested in those areas. Once we got through the lock, I let all of the other boats go through the Great Bridge Bridge, and then I grabbed one of the free docks on the north side. 
Thankfully, there's uh, always people there that are willing to help you tie up. If there's no one there, it's not a big deal. I'm actually getting okay at um, tying up myself, so I'm getting a little more proficient at some things. And uh, once we got tied up, we actually backed it up about 10 feet um, so we could allow room for another boat to fit in there if someone needed to stop later on in the night, which there were a couple of boats that came in, so everyone that night got a spot, and uh, it was a good stay. And that's all we have time for this week. If you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That doesn't cost you guys anything, but it helps us out immensely. And I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Without your guys' support, I would not make these videos. And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Sherry Erickson, Deb Shaw, and Matthew Spotton. Thank you guys so very much. Your support really means the world to me. I do have one legacy patron member. Her name is Joan Linbo. Unfortunately, she has passed on, but she will live on in our hearts forever. We, we miss you, Joan. If you are interested in joining our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below that'll take you to our Patreon page where there are hundreds of bonus photos, videos, real-time updates to let you know uh, where we're at, what's going on in real time, and you would help support the channel, which is awesome. Alrighty, I hope you all are well, and we'll see you next week.